Uh, with the last few days here before the end of spring, what are some things you, got, you have your guys focusing on? Uh, same thing we talked about kind of the first week. We have what we're calling that inside action gap, okay? The, and we're trying to minimize the, the separation between knowing and doing. And at times last year, I feel that uh, that gap was, was too large and a lot that has to do with coaching, how I'm instructing it, how our coach is instructing it, how we're walking it, how we're installing it. Uh, but but we're, what we're going to continue talking about shrinking that gap that if the kids know what to do, then they can go out there and, and do it to their best ability, and we don't have that separation of why aren't they executing with things what they know what to do. From can you start, expand, can you expand on that a little bit? I mean, they knew what they were supposed to do, but they weren't able to execute it. Yeah, and it's uh, you know I, th I think there's a lot of different levels to that, and I think some of it's experience, some of it's concentration. Uh, you know, I don't think any of it is is malice, um, but it's uh, you know sometimes I think that as a coach, I think one of my one of my strengths is I'm detailed, and one of my weaknesses is I'm detailed. <laughs> so I, I think that can go both ways, and I think I have to understand my audience a little bit better, quite honestly. Um, and we have adjustments, um, but to try to try to coach through every situation that maybe at times that that you know that's not that's not what my group needs. That's not what the defense needs. So in terms of of trying to trying to help uh, mitigate that space is. Okay, do I coach some of the details a little bit less and play 95% of what's going to happen and not try to coach through the 5% of what if's going to happen? So you're doing that? You're doing yeah, yeah, we're taking we're, we're taking some strides. It's uh it's not less on the details, it's less on the details that happen 3% of the time. And the effort um, and the, the 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 variety of the calls, I have to uh, make up for some of those with with a uh, little less predictability. What have you thought of the progress of your inside linebacker group from the start until now? Uh, I think the young guys have, have made tremendous progress. Uh, you know, the, the mid-year high school guys, uh, it's, it's always a, um, a really interesting um, indoctrination of college football because every high school program, you know, does different varying degrees of, of uh, how they get those guys ready and what the expectations were in high school. But uh, I think Aaron Hapton uh, has been a real, uh, real good surprise. Uh, didn't know a lot about Aaron through the recruiting process, um, but he's a, a, a very... Um, he's, a, he's a heavy, uh, good instincts inside backer. I think he's going to be a really good tackler for us, and I, and I see him around the ball. Eze Sundu, uh, again, another uh, really young kid, turned 18 just, uh, I think, last month. So he's another young guy. Um, and then Luke Ferrelli, I, I think, has a lot of good movement skills, and we just have to continue to um, get him developed in the weight room. But all three of those those younger players were really, really uh, bullish about what they're going to be for us. Uh, you mentioned Aaron. He made some plays last week. Uh, when you did see him, you know, what was kind of going through your head? What did you like about what he brought to the table? You know, he's a, um, he was a real instinctual player. Uh, he was around the ball a lot, played uh, you know played a lot of different positions. Uh, and when you watched his film, you could tell he was the best player on the field. Uh, I believe he earned Gatorade Player of the Year up there in the great state of Alaska. Um, and then uh, had the opportunity, uh, Malik McMorris, one of our GAs, was actively recruiting him. Uh, and then he had the opportunity to come down with his folks, and we sat down, and I thought he was a great fit, and he uh, thought he was a great fit for what Cal had to offer, so uh, he joined us. What's it been like to have Cade back out there kind of doing the normal, the normal things? Yeah, I mean, uh, Cade had uh, you know a year last year that, that we're excited for him to build on. Um, he has good tools, uh, but, you know, uh, experience is, is still um, something you can't uh, you can't cheat. You know it's hard to manufacture it. Uh, you know perfectly. Practice does a good job of it, but the more that that Cade sees, uh, the better he'll be even. You know he'll be able to build on even from that first year. Does the transfer in and out so often? Does that change your coaching approach at all? It does. It does. So uh, so we're we're really focusing a lot on. You know what we consider what, what our what our families are uh, our defensive our, our defense. We have these vertical families that, that certain techniques, uh, certain alignments are going to live in these families, and we're trying to be very mindful of, of to not contaminate any of the words. So the techniques are the techniques and the, and the vocab is is, uh, is extremely precious to us. Um, for us to ha us to be able to carry volume, I think we have to be very concise with what we call things and how we instruct things. Uh, so those guys can integrate as fast as possible. Everybody is on defense. I mean, there, there's not a lot of unique left out there. Everybody does a lot on defense. So most of these things these kids have done to a certain degree from wherever they're coming from, especially the four uh, the four year transfers. So it's how clean can you make the transition in, in terminology um, to get them on the field and kind of let their their physical attributes shine.
Um, I know there's no right or wrong answer to this, but do you like what the portal has done to the game, or would you have liked it to kind of stay the same? Um, you know, that's, that's I mean, if it's some butts were candy and nuts, right? Uh, I would say that um, kids to be able to pursue what they think is their best interest uh, could have value. Uh, the lack of kids uh, pushing through adversity could have its value as well. So, um, it, I mean, honestly, not not to not to not answer that question, but it doesn't matter. Our eyes are forward. Uh, to, to 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 not like something and to be able to expect to win in the environment. I have to ditch that thought of I don't like it because if, if, if I'm thinking about I don't like something, that's not helping me help the team. So uh, it, I'm not I'm not a person that makes the rules. So I am all about my eyes forward and doing the very best job I can, regardless of what they ask me to do. I know you talked about kind of things becoming more streamlined, maybe things being not as taught as much, or things becoming a little bit more kind of vanilla. How much has the game changed since you know these last few years since it's become part of the thing and there's rosters changing so much? You know, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go all the way to vanilla, um, but I would say that that uh, you know, uh, the the amount of formations you get and the amount of different uh, looks that each team gives you, uh, you know, there's there's a lot to coach. Uh, you know, to to not hit the details, we're going to hit the details on 95 percent of everything, uh, but like a lot of things, that last five percent might take up 30 percent of the time I have to coach through. Uh, the intricacies of, of one or two plays. So we're going to focus more on, uh, you know, playing 90, 95 percent of, of what's going to happen. Uh, there's always going to be something that, that that we get prepared for that we don't see every week. If you go back and and really kind of look at what people have done prior to us and what people give to us, the the amount of variance is is uh, alarmingly large. What we prepare for and then what we get is very, very rarely the numbers, the formations, and the play codes. Uh, it, it's, it, it's shocking when I go back for four years to see what I prepared for, what they had done in their, self, in their, in their four-game break that I chose, and then what the plays look like in their run-pass tendencies versus us. It wasn't the same teams a lot of the time. What have you learned most since the beginning of spring to now? Oh man, what I've learned most. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a, a, a mature mentality group. You know, we do have a lot of young guys, but uh, Craig, Marcus Harris, Miles Williams in the back end, Noel, uh, Matt Littlejohn, those guys are showing maturity, they're showing a consistency in performance. Uh, Xavier, David Reese, those guys are showing consistency in performance. So I feel right now, I think I've, I've, I've seen a level of consistency in the team that sometimes in spring is, is, is there's, there's a tremendous, hey, today was a good day and the next day is just nowhere near what you were. So I've seen a level of consistency day to day that I'm real proud of. Seems like there's a lot of fluctuation in your down two guys. That that going to be a major rotation kind of situation? Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, I think with, with who we have on the roster right now, uh, with all different levels of health, all different levels of experience and, and uh, kind of their skills, I think that's going to be a, a big big opportunity for a lot of guys to committee. What do you hope to see Saturday? You had a lot of guys emerge last week in that scrimmage. What do you hope? To, you hope something similar? Or what are you hoping to see Saturday? Um, you know, I hope we get lined up and I hope we tackle. It's, other than that, you know, uh, we'll have some guys in there that, that are getting a, a lot of reps that, that maybe traditionally don't get a lot of reps, uh, so they might get a little bit tired, um, and they might get some uh, they might get some matchups that, that, are, that are tough for them, but uh, line up and tackle is what I want to see. Do you think Jackson's going to get drafted? You know, uh, I, I don't know. You know, what I do know is the NFL is an uh, inexact science. And uh, I watched a lot of prognostication on who's going to get drafted and what, you know, what, uh, I mean, it's draft, it's mock draft 4.0 and mock draft 5.0. Um, we'll leave the experts, experts and, and uh, I think either way, Jack's going to have opportunity to, to, to get uh, invited to a team if it's via the draft or via uh, another avenue. And I think he's going to go give his best effort and I know he's ready and excited. Do you think that long snapping thing is going to make a difference? I guess it wouldn't hurt. Well, what I do know is uh, there's a lot of different ways to make a 53, you know, um, and it's all about creating value. And as a, as a, if you're outside the first two rounds, you're going to have to figure out what your value is to the organization. And everybody's, are you a smart kid that creates value? I can play multiple positions without reps. 
uh, if you have a certain skill on special teams or uh, a niche of a, of a long snap or a backup long snapper that uh, you know when they when they compile those fifty three, it's uh, it's a huge variety of what they think can make the team win. Could he play a different position on defense? Uh, I think you probably play. You know, if you if you're playing uh, traditional four three spacing, I think you could play any of the three pla- uh, three spots behind the ball. There's not a lot of traditional field overhangs uh, in the NFL with the hash marks. You know, our our game's a little bit different because the uh, we're we're so distorted with the hash mark spacing. Yeah that you never have uh, some of those spacing issues in the middle of the field in the NFL because the hash marker is 